Welcome to class. Happy Valentine's Day. I was, I'm, Valentine's Day is one of my favorite times to do a cooking class because there's just so much you can do around heart shapes and pink and red foods and sweet foods. Um, so I always actually have a really hard time picking what we're actually going to be cooking for Valentine's Day because there's just such an array of fun things that you can do. Um, but what I went for this time around for us was doing a sweet and salty charcuterie board. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to make a couple of different recipes that are going to contribute to the charcuterie board. And then we'll talk about how to plate a charcuterie board in a healthful yet uh, very aware of sensory and tastes and flavors and textures and, the, and all the different ways that you can put together a really beautiful board. But first we are going to home make some of the ingredients. So take what you will from this. Know that you never have to home make all of your ingredients for a charcuterie board. Charcuteries are, the whole point of it is they should be pretty easy to throw together. Um, but I think it's really fun to know that you can make some of the items that go on there and then obviously use them throughout your life um, in, in other ways. So we're going to do a couple of things that um, aren't you know, super related to each other necessarily, but they're going to go onto our board. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to start with homemade crackers. And if you've never made homemade crackers before, they're so easy. The the time, it's just the time investment of having them actually bake that takes, you know, longer than opening up a box of crackers. Um, but they make quite a bit, especially if you're someone who's buying like simple mills or some of these more higher end, you know, like almond kind of crackers you don't get a whole lot in that box. And so if you think of that quantity and spending six bucks a box, seven bucks a box, you're going to spend a whole lot less and make about one and a half times as much as you would get in that one box, depending on how thin you make your crackers. So let's go ahead and make them. We're going to start with almond flour. So these are almond flour crackers. You can use any sort of seed flour. So if you have, you know, an intolerance to almonds or you can't find almond flour at the right price point, it could be, it could be like garbanzo bean flour, which is actually legume based flour. Um, it can be any sort of nut flour that you can find, but regular flour won't work as well in this particular dish because we're looking for a flat, flat cracker. Regular flour has uh, the gluten in it. And so it will rise as it bakes. And that's not what we want from a cracker. So you want to make sure that it is more of a seed cracker or a bean, sorry, not a seed cracker, a seed flour or a bean flour um, that's not going to rise. We want to make sure it's something that like doesn't have any of that gluten or the, the flour properties. So we're going to do one full cup of almond flour. It can, I happen to have super fine uh, just because that's what I had available in my house, the super fine almond flour. It doesn't have to be. We're not technically like baking like a cake or a cupcake where you want that super fine. It could be the real kind of dark fibrous looking almond flour. It doesn't matter. It's just going to give you a slightly different texture in your cracker. So one cup of that. Almond flour is a good source of fiber. Other than that, it's kind of a good source of not a whole lot. <laughs> it's sort of like a nothing food. Almonds, you have to eat a whole lot of almonds to get all the properties. So you get a little bit of B, B vitamins, a little bit of magnesium. But health-wise, I actually kind of like that it's a bit of a nothing food. Um, same with almond milk. Is Unless you're eating the actual almond and eating like a good full portion of it, the flours and the milks themselves don't give you a whole heck of a lot. So you have a lot of wiggle room with what you're serving with that cracker. Um, it makes them fairly low glycemic, which is also nice. Your blood sugar is not going to spike a whole lot from that. We're going to put some sesame seeds in here and we're going to do quite a bit because uh, these are going to be seedy crackers we want like the, the taste of seeds so it's about three tablespoons which i always just kind of eyeball and then you can flavor this up as much as you like uh, salt pepper garlic powder i'm just going to do some simple simple sea salt and that's it because i know what i'm going to be serving with this on our charcuterie i want the, the dips and things that we're making to be the flavor profile um, but you can really go nuts. You can even make these kind of sweet if you want to do like a cinnamon nutmeg, salt, sea salt flavor profile. You could do that too. Um, we're going to do some baking soda, a very little amount just to kind of make sure there's a consistency in the cracker. So it is a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And an egg to mix it all together. 
And as always, I am using a pasture raised egg. It's just every little place you can insert some extra nutrition, the better. So your pasture raised, not pasteurized, pasture raised in the pasture egg is going to be higher in vitamin D, higher in vitamin A, um, a little bit higher in omegas actually, and lower in saturated fat than your typical standard egg. Um, it's just overall better for you. So you're going to mix this up and it's going to get all stuck in your whisk. You could, if you don't deal, want to deal with this, you could whisk up your egg first and then dump that in. Um, doesn't really matter. It just takes an extra couple of seconds to kind of clean up your whisk and then use your spatula for the rest. Just make sure it's all well stirred. I know it doesn't look like much, but we're going to flatten these into crackers. So it, it actually will make more than you think. And by making our own crackers, one, we have total say in whatever the flavor profile is. So we could go the, the sweet route. We could add thyme um, and rosemary instead. Like you could do so much with it. Nutritional yeast to make it kind of cheesy. But we're also getting rid of all of those industrialized oils that are in a regular cracker. Good luck finding a cracker without canola oil or soybean oil or cottonseed oil. And these are all industrialized and oxidized oils that create inflammation. So the, the cracker, I shouldn't say good luck because they do exist out there. They're just, they tend to be more expensive. So this is a way that you can get good quality ingredients in your cracker without having that high price point. All right, move all of your stuff out of the way. We're going to do some rolling. This is the fun part. You get to pretend like you're a super chef and get out your rolling pin. How often do you actually get to do that anymore these days, right? My uh, my four-year-old loves using a rolling pin and I'm like scrambling with what the heck am I gonna give her um, to roll with? Okay, so you're gonna spray. I use avocado oil spray. You could also use olive oil spray, but same thing as your oils. What is your spray coming from? If you're using standard Pam, that's like a canola industrialized oil. So get a good cold pressed oil spray as well as your regular oils. And you're going to spray both sides of a piece of parchment paper so that it doesn't stick as we roll. Ah, now the parchment papers are sticking together. Stay. Put this all down here. Now you have two choices. If you like a really thin cracker, like almost wafery, you could actually divvy this into two segments and roll each segment at a time. And that's going to give you a really, really thin cracker just simply because there's not a whole bunch of quantity of the dough here. Um, I kind of like my crackers a little bit thicker, so I just do the whole thing all at once. Take your sprayed side, stick it over the top. So it's oil on oil, so it's not going to stick. Because trust me, I forgot one time I didn't spray it, and it just it just stuck everywhere, all over the parchment. It was ridiculous. It was like silly. And then you get to do your fun rolling. And if you have kids at home, you can have them do this part. And you just roll to that desired consistency. And you got to make these a couple of times to kind of know what you like, what consistency you like. You'll get the hang of it. And it's okay if they're not all exactly the same, if there's some thicker crackers in the middle and some thinner crackers off to the side. And this is where those of you with OCD, your OCD is going to shine through. I don't care if my crackers are the exact same size or if some of them have jagged edges. I don't care at all. If you do care and you want them to be perfectly square, you're going to have to like do that a lot more gently and mindfully and kind of make a nice square shape. You'll see here, mine is a big old blob because it doesn't matter to me. And then because we're going to use some parchment later on and we're gonna be good stewards of our environment, I'm gonna fold this with the oil sides in sticking to each other and set this to the side for later, which we'll get to. An exciting one. Now you're going to take your pizza cutter, another tool that you don't get to use all that often, and you just create whatever darn cracker shapes you want. Um, if you wanted to make heart-shaped crackers and you have a tiny little heart cookie cutter, you could do that. 
Um, but basically we're not separating them yet because we do have to bake this, but we're just, we're kind of creating that line where we could break them once they're nice and hard. So just kind of, it's totally an eyeball of however big and whatever size you want to make your crackers. And just creating that perforation line all the way across. And I'm, I'm sure you can kind of see this, but in the, they are not equal shapes. They are not equal sizes. I don't care, my family doesn't care. Okay, so can you kind of see that more or less? You can see those lines. So now once I bake them and they get really, really crispy, all I'm gonna do is kind of lift this up and pop them all out and I have all those crackers. And this is here again, you could add toppings if you like some additional sea salt on top. In fact, I will do that. If you wanna do extra sesame seeds on top, you know, how do you like your crackers? Parmesan cheese would be really good here. Okay, now my oven is already set to 350. I'm gonna bake these for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven. Just kind of, again, the first time you make this, watch it, maybe even set your oven for more like 12 minutes the first time and just see, are they burning? Um, how's it looking? Are they golden brown? Do you like yours really crunchy? 15 tends to be pretty good for mine, but it always depends too on how thick or thin the center is. Sometimes my outer edges are so thin that they get a little burned and I have to kind of get rid of those to make the rest of them. So, it, you know, it'll be different every single time. So let's set the oven to 15 minutes. And those will be ready for us by the end of class, okay? So we will get rid of our rolling pin and move on to, this one is one of my favorites. This is such a fun one that I really only make this time of year at Valentine's Day. We're gonna make chocolate hummus and you may have had it already. It kind of got trendy and popular in the last year or two with like the processed hummuses. Here's the deal with hummus though. If industrialized hummus, prepackaged hummus, often uses those industrialized oils. It's actually really hard to find a hummus that uses an olive or, or an avocado oil. And this is not to say don't use those. I've got a package of hummus already in my fridge. They're easy to use, but we also don't eat a lot of other industrialized oils in our household. So know that small amounts are okay. Please don't worry about like, oh, now I have to home make all my own hummus all the time. Um, but it's just something to be aware of because I think a lot of foods get sort of a health halo of, oh, this is really good for me. And I therefore don't need to worry about what else is in it. Like hummus is a very healthful food. It's full of legumes and fiber, but often has oils that can create some inflammation. So if, you're, if your diet is a lot of processed foods, lots of fast foods, that could be also a contributor. Another thing just to note while we're talking about the health effects of hummus is hummus is because it comes from a legume, it's a carb. It has some protein. It definitely has healthy fats or unhealthy fats, um, but it also can increase your blood sugar. So if you're someone who's wearing a continuous glucose monitor or you're having, or you have diabetes and you're, and you're watching your blood sugars, hummus is a good healthful food, but it can often spike your blood sugar more than you would think. So definitely pairing that with really high fiber things like vegetables rather than always crackers and hummus, because now you're having carb with carbs. So just a little thing to be aware of. So let's make our hummus. I've got my rinsed chickpeas. I'm going to just, because I, because I know myself and I love chickpeas so much, I'm going to use most of the can, but I'm going to save a little bit for my lunch. So it's going to be fine. That was one can of drained rinsed chickpeas. Okay. You can use any bean you want in here. Just be, be aware of the flavor profile. Um, cause we're going to make this dessert like and chocolatey. So we don't want a bean that has a lot, a lot of potent flavor. Like I don't know that I would use a kidney bean because kidney beans have a very specific flavor and taste to them. Black beans might work and they would contribute to the chocolatey effect. Um, not kidney beans. Can cannellini beans would also work. They're very, very creamy, but chickpeas are great. High in fiber, very high in magnesium. Um, beans also have a great source of protein, but they are carbohydrate also. So just kind of, you know, to be aware of that. So I have my can of beans. I'm going to do a third cup of any nut butter you like. It can be peanut butter. It can be almond butter. 
I happen to have sun butter because I have kids who aren't allowed to have nuts at school. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use sun butter. Um, about a third cup, which I just always kind of eyeball as like two big spoonfuls is about a third cup. Now, depending on the nut butter you choose, it's going to give different types of nutrition. But for the most part, nuts and seeds give a lot of good magnesium, which is good for calming, um, healthy fat to keep us full, protein to keep us full, um, and also some other phytonutrients uh, like your minerals are going to be in, in your nut butters. Okay, we're going to do a third cup of cocoa powder or cacao powder. So I'm gonna show you, I'm actually using cacao powder and I know this is backwards on your screen, but C-A-C-A-O, cacao. Cacao is the pod before they turn it into cocoa. So it's just a little bit less refined, which means it's a little bit higher in all those polyphenols and antioxidants that chocolate is known for. We all talk about like, oh, the benefits of chocolate, you get all this magnesium and it helps you calm down and it helps stimulate your mood. Um, you get more of that from the cacao than the cocoa. Um, cacao is a bit more bitter though. So keep that in mind. The flavor profile is more bitter than regular cocoa. So you may or may not <laughs> love that. Um, you may want to do a half and half, like part cocoa, part cacao. Let's get stuck in here. Goodness gracious. Um, you may need to also add a little bit more sweetener, but I like it in recipes like this where it's already really, it's going to be blended with sweetener. It's going to be blended with a bunch of other things versus something like a pudding, let's say, like maybe you're using, you're making avocado pudding, which is posted on our website, on our recipe page. Um, that one doesn't use as much sweetener. So you might pick up on the bitterness of the cacao a lot more than you would in this dish that has... So we're going to have some sweetener in here. It already has the nut butter, like other flavor profiles are kind of covering up the bitter taste. But know that cocoa powder is also very healthful. You don't have to switch to cacao. These are just kind of ideas and ways of showing you ways of using other types of ingredients. All right, so we have our cacao. We're also going to do about a third cup of any sweetener you like. And of course, I'm going to be using a low glycemic sweetener. I'm using date syrup. Um, you could also use raw honey. You could use maple syrup. Maple syrup is a little bit higher glycemic. Coconut nectar would work here. You can also use something like a liquid monk fruit or a uh, liquid allulose, which is very, very low. with like almost minimal blood sugar spike. Um, yeah, those are, those are your sweeteners. Okay. And now a quarter cup of any milk you like. You can use regular milk. It doesn't matter. Whatever milk is healthful for you. I will show you what I'm using in a second. I'm using macadamia nut milk. I'm very into macadamia nut milk lately because it is a really great source of fat and it's much more environmentally sustainable and environmentally friendly than almonds. Almond milk takes a whole lot of water whole lot of, of land production and it doesn't really contribute a whole lot to our nutrition necessarily. It's kind of like a nothing food, like I was saying. So macadamias are just a lot more beneficial for the plant and you get good healthy fat from it. And it's a little bit creamier than almond milk. So I kind of like it like in my coffee as a latte. So I'm using milkadamia unsweetened macadamia nut milk. It's a higher price point than some of your other nut milks. Um, but I like that one. We're also going to use a little bit of vanilla and then a little sprinkle of sea salt. And again, feel free to mess with, nah, I need a little bit more vanilla than that, to mess with flavorings. You could do cayenne pepper in here and make it like a spicy sweet. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt. You could do some cinnamon. You could do nutmeg, cardamom. And we're going to blend this up in our food processor. Hang tight with me. It's going to be loud for a minute. And this is, it's going to have a consistency more like a mousse um, than, than a hummus per se. 
uh, is how I would describe that. Would be the time where it stops. All right. So now, as opposed to ah, some of our other kind of chocolate dips or chocolate mousses or chocolate souffles that we might use that are just really high in sugar, now we have a dip that tastes incredibly sweet, very kind of luxurious tasting because it has that moussey texture to it. But we know we've got fiber, we've got healthy fat, we've got low glycemic. This is benefiting our health and our nutrition. But we just kind of have to be aware of what we're going to use to dip in it, right? As opposed to a savory hummus, I'm not going to be dipping my bell peppers in here. This is going to be great for a fruit dip strawberries, delicious, um, grapes, even melon would be really good in here. Um, oranges, apple slices, excellent. So you're pairing these healthy high fiber carb fruits with now a healthy high fiber, high protein, healthy fat dip. Um, I'm going to put it in a cute little bowl for our charcuterie board. Cause remember that's our goal here. We're making crackers and dipping everything for our charcuterie and make it adorable in a little heart dish. So hopefully you can see like that texture here. It's perfect for dip for fruit. You could even, uh oh, making it making a mess. You could add this now, like let's say you put it on your charcuterie board you, and you only use half of it and you still have half left. Obviously you could take it to work with you as a snack with some apple slices tomorrow, but maybe you add it to oats and chia seeds and have an overnight chocolate oat oatmeal tomorrow morning topped with some strawberries and blueberries and whipped cream or Greek yogurt. And you have this decadent chocolate dessert breakfast with beans, with beans in it. You're having beans for breakfast. Be in a dip. It could be in another format as well. So that's about, I've still got maybe another half serving for this. So I'll put this on our charcuterie. I still have leftover that I could refill if everyone's just licking this up tonight, or I could add this to, like I said, uh, an oatmeal. I can mix it with some Greek yogurt and boom, have a chocolate yogurt to eat as well. So I'm going to add this to our board and I'll bring the board out toward the end. Let's side. I always like to really think of all these different ways that you can use the exact same recipe. Because then if you love it, you can keep making it, keep becoming really familiar with it. And don't you don't have to feel kind of stifled into just one way of using it. So that's really, oh, graham crackers and pretzels. Also good things to dip in there. Uh, again, then you're having a carb kind of with a carb. But if, if we're thinking sweet and salty, um, those could be good pairings as well. All right, another one of my favorite, we're gonna actually make our own chocolate, um, our own chocolate bark. And you'll be amazed at how easy this is, to be totally honest. Um, this is kind of one of those things that tastes really amazing and people are always really impressed by it, but it takes zero effort whatsoever. So we're just gonna melt some chocolate. I have some cacao chips. So remember the cacao is like the original pod that has not been sweetened whatsoever. Very high in fiber and phytonutrients and antioxidants that are good for our heart and good for our brain and good for our circulation, but it does taste bitter. So it's better for our digestion because of that. Um, but I kind of like to mix and match. So I'll do part cacao and part chocolate chips just because otherwise it's a little too bitter and I need to add sweetener, whereas I don't have to add any sweetener if I'm using some like milk chocolate chips. So I have some cacao, some mini chocolate chips. Um, I like this brand Enjoy Life because it's allergen free. So if you have kids with allergies or you're serving this to a group of people and you don't really know if they have allergies, it's kind of nice that way. Um, the original recipe, by the way, is 12 ounces of chocolate chips heated up and mixed together. I'm just eyeballing this because I'm making it for my family. We're having like a, a Valentine's charcuterie with artichokes tonight. That's what we're having for dinner because I'm already making this for class. Um, so I figure, why not? This is what we're having. 
Um, so I'm not making a whole big batch, but you'll see like how easy it is just to literally eyeball this. So all I have are cacao chips and chocolate chips, and you could just have chocolate chips, or you could have a chocolate bar that you love. Maybe that's a low glycemic fair trade chocolate bar, chop it up into pieces and put that in a bowl. It doesn't have to be chips. It could just literally be pieces of chocolate. Um, and we're going to put this in the microwave for 30 seconds. Some people will add coconut oil to their chocolate chip mix as they're melting it, um, like a teaspoon to two teaspoons. And you'll see that a lot in recipes that call for melted chocolate. What that does is it just creates a kind of a more consistent, thicker and smoother chocolate taste. I will do that a lot if I am using it like as a dip, if I'm dipping chocolate strawberries or if I'm going to be drizzling it on top of whatever it is that I made, if I want something a lot smoother. We're gonna turn this into bark. It's gonna be break, breaking up into pieces. So I don't really care if it's a smooth, really consistent texture. So I, why bother the, with the extra step? So I'm going to stir this and it usually takes two to three rounds of 30 second increments. You gotta, the, those chocolate chips will stick. But it's just gonna melt. Okay, so another 30 seconds. And I'll tell you something that I did before, before class is I just took a big mix of pumpkin seeds or pepitas and mixed nuts. So there's some cashews, some almonds, and pepitas. And what I did was I tossed them with a little bit of cinnamon, and I lightly sprayed them on a baking sheet with my avocado oil. And I put them in the oven for like three to five minutes um, at, what, what did I cook that at? At 350. And I just kind of watched and stirred, and so they're toasted. So they just have even more aromatic flavor. Um, oh, and I salted them as well. So they're salty cinnamon, roasted nuts and seeds. It took five minutes. And if just as a side note, anytime you can toast your nuts and seeds, like for a salad, for a side dish, even just for snacking, it creates so much more smell, aromatic flavor, um, gets your, your mouth watering even more. So they're, they're a lot more satiating and satisfying. Might need one more 30 second bout. I still see some chocolate chip chunks in here. Oh, oh, it's melting. See, I mean, now I just have melted chocolate. What? So you don't, you all want to just dive into this right now, right? We have some strawberries. Let's dunk it in. That's, that's all you need to do to do melted chocolate. It's not this crazy secret process. Um, you just microwave your chocolate. That's it. And you literally could dip some strawberries in here. If you're just like, oh, I'm having such a sweet craving right now. I really need something, especially late at night. Get a strawberry, dip it in your melted chocolate. Boom, done. You have you have reached that satisfaction. We pull our crackers out. Mm. So I'm touching them in the middle. I'll show you what they look like right now. See that they're really golden along the outside, but the middle is just it's still a little bit bounce back when I'm feeling it. It feels a little soft and that's not how we want our cracker. So I'm going to just put it in for another probably, I'm going to go for three minutes more and see if it's done about that. Okay, back to our, our chocolate bark. So I'm going to take some of my roasted nuts and seeds and just stir them in to my chocolate bark. Da, da, da. And so obviously you can make a huge batch of this, right? Like you, you can make a big old amount if you're wanting to make a whole bunch of chocolate bark and bring it to work, you know, for your coworkers. Back to that parchment paper that we saved. Bum, bum, bum. And I'm just gonna pour it onto here. Don't let any chalk, don't leave any chocolate behind. No chocolate left behind. And chocolate, I mean, the rumors are true, by the way. Chocolate really is so high in magnesium, which helps with 
relaxation can help boost mood, especially for ladies. Um, in our cycles, when we have hormone shifts, the, there are certain phytonutrients in cacao that literally do boost our hormones. So it's not, it's not an old wives tale. Chocolate really does make us feel better. Um, especially if we have some hormone imbalances. So now this is where you get to be creative and have fun with how you like your chocolate bark. Do you like it thick? Do you like it thin? Um, just kind of move it around. There's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't have to have any particular shape. Just do what you want with it. And maybe you make it thin simply because you want to have more volumes of chocolate to eat. You do what you need to do. Get that soaking so the chocolate doesn't sink in. And then you're going to sprinkle a little bit more nuts and seeds over the top to make it beautiful. So there's nuts and seeds mixed in. So we have B vitamins, we have fiber, we have fats, we have proteins, all mixed into our dessert. Okay, and we're going to balance our blood sugar that way from the sugar that's already in the chocolate because we did use sweetened milk chocolate chips in addition to our cacao. It's just pretty. Even if it's crumbs. Okay, and finally, because we're doing sweet and salty, because of that combination of flavors is so powerful, it's also really powerful for avoiding cravings. Um, if you look at how foods are, like processed foods are often put together, there's a lot more sweet than there is savory because that keeps us wanting more. There's this, this hormone stimulation of a, ah, this dopamine response to just sweet. So when you balance sweet with salty, with savory, with umami, you feel more satisfied and you don't have to eat quite as much, which is really cool. All right. I think our crackers might be done. Yep, yep, yep. So we'll let these cool off for a minute. But see, it's nice and, oops, sorry, golden when I hit their no bounce back. So I'm going to let these cool and then we can break them up into crackers. Back to our bark. So I'm just going to also, the nuts were slightly salted, so I don't need to add a lot. But a few just big crunchy flakes of salt also make that mm, powerful salty chocolate explosion. All I need to do is put this in the refrigerator for 30 to 45 minutes and it can be ready to go. I kind of, my preference is to put it in the freezer overnight because then it's just really hard and breakable and it doesn't have any kind of malleableness. Um, if you wanted to store it, then you would, after you break it up, you would store it in your freezer. So you could make it today and serve this, you know, over the weekend and just keep the pieces in your freezer. Um, so you get a freezer friendly plate and by the magic of television, I already made some because I wanted to show you how it works. So I just made this really, really quick before class. I just took like a little handful of chocolate with some of my nuts and spice and nuts and seeds and salt and I put it in the refrigerator. Okay, so now I have my bark and I just get to have fun with and there's no rhyme or reason. Just break it up. Right, so now I have these cool little pieces of bark to also serve on my charcuterie board that look pretty, that give people that chocolate bite, even though I'm not adding a whole lot of desserts and like heavily sweet foods to my board, but they're fun. And these are a great little gift for people too. Um, you just have to, you know, know that it will melt if it's setting out. So you can keep it in your freezer, keep it in your fridge. This was refrigerated. I made these at 11.45, literally right before class. So it's already done. So I'm just going to take these off because we're going to put it on our board. I'm going to transfer this on here and I'm going to put it back in my fridge. And this will be ready for me to keep on adding to my charcuterie board this evening. How cool is that? Aren't, isn't bark fun? I love chocolate bark. So I'm going to set this aside for us for our board. Okay, so we only have one recipe left. Excuse me while I scratch my eye. Um, and then we're going to put our board together. We're going to make a drink because we have to drink while we're putting charcuterie boards together. And no, you don't have to drink alcohol. You just have to have a fun drink. So we're going to make a Valentine's kind of ready, red, pink drink with goji berries. I'm going to make a goji berry sparkler. 
So I have already made a bunch of goji tea. If you're not familiar with goji berries, and I, I threw away my package, but um, they they look like little pinkish red, they look like big pinkish red raisins. That's what they look like. They're a dried berry. They're pretty tart. Um, I personally don't love eating them plain. I, I enjoy the tart flavor, but they're very, very hard and chewy as opposed to a raisin that's pretty soft. So how I like to eat them is in a drink form because they're a super, super, super source of vitamin C, um, which is so good for our immune system. And vitamin C helps us to absorb certain minerals like iron. And guess what? Goji berries are a good source of iron too. So now you're getting this really well-absorbed iron. It's a great recipe for pe for those of you who might have anemia or just kind of low blood iron. Um, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, if you've had surgery before, um, also a good drink to have, let's say if you're having meat, if you're going to have a, a steak dinner tonight, have a goji sparkler along the side, and now we're getting vitamin C along with the iron from our steak, and we're actually absorbing all that iron really well. So the, all you have to do to actually make a goji tea is you just soak the goji berries in water. That's it. So I, I prefer using some hot boiling water. You could also simmer them in boiling water. It kind of depends on how much time you have. I had this like half a package of old ones that kind of all had to get used pretty soon. So I made a huge container. Usually I'll make like two or three cups at a time, um, but I happen to have a whole lot. So I had probably a three quarter cups amount of goji berries and I used my entire kettle of boiling water over it. And therefore I had all of this. So usually I don't make quite this much, but again, it is pretty tart. So we're not gonna add much, maybe about a third of our glass of goji tea. We're going to add a splash of citrus to kind of help take care of some of that tartness, even though, yes, citrus is tart, um, but the sour and the tart kind of balance each other out. So I have lemon juice already made, but you could use lime. I actually really enjoy lime juice in here. I just didn't have any limes. And then sparkling water. You can use a flavor like a lime sparkling water. I have this little arc, make your own sparkling water device. So I... That way I can just use plain sparkling water whenever I do my recipes. And you just fill it up. So now, yes, you have a little sugar from the gojis, but it's not very much. This is a really, really low glycemic mocktail, um, as opposed to a lot of the mocktails out there. I love that alcohol and is becoming kind of like passe. Not that I don't drink alcohol or you can't either. I like wine. Um, but it's nice that mocktails are becoming popular, that that having non-alcoholic drinks is becoming popular. The downside is a lot of them are very high in sugar. So if we can find a way to have a low sugar mocktail, even better. And even better than that is using bitters. Bitters help us to digest our food better. If you have bitters before you eat a meal, you're going to digest that meal a whole lot better. It helps with bloating. If you're someone who has IBS or kind of like that stress gut feeling, um, bitters can really help with that. But a lot of bitters, like a lot of processed foods, are made with not so great ingredients. Um, so this is a brand I really, really like, Zhuzh. It's actually a friend of mine who makes it, J-U-J. -J. They're a new brand, but there are other brands out there too. Um, but she has one called Cran Biscus, and it just adds a little bit of that cocktail bartender vibe, and you're helping with your digestive system. And now we have something fun to drink while we make our charcuterie board. Cheers. Oh, so good. Mint would be really good in there. The store just didn't have any mint. That's what that's missing. Okay, let's make our board. Let's get to the finale here. Oh, yeah. I wanted to show you this. We're not going to use it on this board, but um, fruit dips are amazing for Valentine's Day board. For They're amazing for sweet and salty boards. We made our fruit dip out of chocolate, but I wanted to show you this because it's a really nice, easy alternative if you don't have time to make your own dip. This brand, Chobani, makes a zero sugar Greek yogurt and their sugar is, their zero sugar is not from artificial flavoring. It's from stevia and monk fruit. So it's a good source of zero sugar. They, they have, I think there's four flavors and they taste like dessert. This one is strawberry cheesecake. They have a key lime pie. They have a chocolate one or a milk and cookies, something like that. It tastes like Oreos. Um, but these are so nice when you are having that sweetness craving because, oh my gosh, this literally tastes like strawberry cheesecake. And if you put some nuts in here, some walnuts, even like take one graham cracker and crush it up or some granola or maybe your chocolate bark, 
This could be a great dessert for you, a great sweet breakfast, um, but can also be a dip on your charcuterie board. So if you're like, ah, I just, I want to serve something kind of fun as an appetizer, put one of these on here with some bananas and strawberries and a little bit of chocolate bark, done. You have the most beautiful, super yummy charcuterie board that's also nourishing yourself and your guests. So I just wanted to show you that as an, as an option for products. So our charcuterie board is going to be a little bit of a mix and match of savory and salt and sweet. Again, I'm serving this as part of our dinner tonight. So everyone's going to, I wanted to make sure that we had some sort of vegetable, that we had some sort of fiber along with the sweetness. I didn't want it to just be a dessert platter. Um, so our source of vegetable, which is sometimes hard to do on a sweet board, is we're going to do goat cheese stuffed bell peppers. Um, roasted carrots um, also can be a good contribution to a kind of a vegetable on a sweeter board. If you roast them with some cinnamon and nutmeg and cumin, it brings out the sweetness. That's another great vegetable for these. But we're just going to do, I got these little miniature bell peppers that are so cute. And I know I'm cutting behind the board so you can't see a whole lot right now, but I just wanted to cut a couple off the board. And these you can make ahead of time. In fact, I probably should have made several ahead of time just so you can see them. Um, but they'll they'll sit for a couple of days with the cheese in them. They'll be fine. So I have some garlic and herb goat cheese. If you can find pasture-raised anything dairy, it's better for you. It's better for the animal. It's better for the environment. Um, so pasture-raised goat cheese, ideally. But they're so easy. You just like stuff the goat cheese in there. And it doesn't have to go all the way down because most, most people are going to eat this in one bite, but they look kind of expensive and special because there's the goat cheese and their little bite sizes. Um, so I'll only do a couple just to show you here. I won't waste your time having you watch me stuff bell peppers. Although maybe that could be meditative for you. Maybe we could all do some breath work while I stuff bell peppers together, <laughs> really work on our mindfulness. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm only going to stuff a couple here so you can get the gist. But interestingly enough, my kiddos who, you know, they're kids, they're, they're two and four, they're pretty good eaters, but they've got their picky, their pickiness and bell peppers, for whatever reason, were their no-go food for the longest time. Like, nope, neither one of them would touch a bell pepper. And I made these one time and I just put them on the middle of the plate while in the middle of the table while we were having dinner this was the gateway food for them. There was something about, oh, it has cheese. Oh, we're going to eat that then. Um, and then all of a sudden bell peppers were fine. And now I'll, you know, have my washed bell peppers on the counter when I bring them home from the grocery store before I cut them or do whatever. They're not safe. But all of a sudden I'll turn around and the bell peppers will be half eaten because my kids came up and reached for them and grabbed them. They're like a favorite food. So maybe this could be your gateway to bell peppers is goat cheese stuffed bell peppers. And another thing you can do is roast the bell peppers ahead of time if you want them to be just that much sweeter and softer. It's just an extra step, but they do taste good that way. Okay, so look how sweet and cute those little guys are. I'll probably end up making more of those for tonight, but just in the name of time. We're also going to do some savory, salty, brined olives. So these olives are from Trader Joe's. They're their grilled olives. Oh my goodness, these guys are so good. If you love olives, you will love these grilled olives. The only thing I don't love is the oil is sunflower oil, which is typically industrialized. Um, so, you know, not my favorite, but if we're talking the grand scheme of things, again, we're balancing out good and bad and healthful and not helpful, helpful. This is all a very healthful dish. I'm not too worried about a little bit of sunflower oil with my very, very healthy olive oil based olive. Um, and now we have some fats going on that are going to, again, keep us full. So we're not always reaching in for crackers and whatnot. Okay. Need our crackers. Look at that. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. It's very cathartic. It can feel really nice to just breathe and meditate while you break up your crackers. 
Also a fun activity for kids. If you have them at home, break up all the crackers. See how easy, I mean, that's only a third of the crackers. I can go and break up more of them. Um, so easy, so fun. Now we've got that. Now we're going to add our fruit. I washed some grapes. I have some strawberries. Put them next to our chocolate hummus. And we've got our bark. And get a few more crackers. And then again, you can get creative. Maybe you have some brie cheese, some, a little bit more of a splurge, and you can add that here. I have some mozzarella balls I might add. Maybe I will do that. Um, I'm also going to add a whole lot more bell peppers right there on my charcuterie board. So that'll be a little bit more full as I make the platter. But you can see how this can start to fill up into this beautiful platter that has a little bit of everything as far as representation. So we've got our fruit, we've got our antioxidants, we've got protein, fat, fiber, and cacao and magnesium in our dip. We have healthy fats from our olives. We have some fiber and antioxidants and phytonutrients in our vegetable representation and homemade crackers that don't have inflammatory oils. All on a board that eventually will be full and beautiful once I totally finish it off that was done in about 40 minutes uh, while homemaking half of those ingredients and we have a drink on the side. So really, that, I mean, that, that's so possible for you and you can get so creative and you can add coconut flakes and do all these kinds of fun things here to make it really, really special. So hopefully you enjoyed that and you make some of these recipes. Um, I will be posting this video on our website. And I'm going to look at some questions. Okay, here we go. Um, 